Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear students, I welcome all of you back to the course on introduction to science fiction studies. I hope you are enjoying it so far because we have come through a lot of data, a lot of scientific facts, a lot of excitement to couple with everything. This particular lecture will be something a little different from the others that we have come across. Previously, we talked about science fiction and time travel. We talked about science fiction and space travel. We talked about science fiction and genetic engineering, cloning and all sorts of um, uh, possibilities that come up with um, DNA management and engineering. So in this one, what we are going to do is we're talking about pandemic situations and science fiction. How does science fiction figure in pandemic or how does pandemic literature talk about science fiction indirectly or directly? This particular episode will be devoted to the idea of pandemic, the history of pandemic and most importantly the science fiction elements included in pandemic literature and whatnot. So to go ahead with first let us come up and uh, meet with these four concepts that science fiction uh, these four times when science fiction has become reality one is paperless money when science fiction uh, like star wars star troopers and uh, uh, all those star trek series they were talking about credits being transformed it's a popular tv series uh, and also movies uh, which are related to the Star Wars galaxy or Star Trek galaxy. You can go and um, just uh, go on browse on the internet. You will find the series. Uh, they travel, uh, they take up the narratives for interplanetary, interstellar, intergalactic travel, uh, space operas mostly. So there you have might have come across the concept of paperless money where they are just transferring numbers from one account to the other. So that concept which was previously given to us during uh, the release of such movies, that concept is now a reality. Now we have UPI system. Most of us who are born after the, uh, in the millennium, if you are born after tw uh, 2000, then you might be less acquainted with cash and more acquainted with bank accounts, online transfer, NFTS, IMPS, all of these systems. And now that we are living in the uh, generation of UPI, we never see money really. All we do is we know our parents, they are transferring money to us. Uh, we just look at the mobile screen, see that there is money and we pay it scanning a device and all sorts of things. So that is something which was predicted by science fiction long ago. AI assistance. Again, if you go back to the Star Wars galaxy, galactic um, uh, space opera, you will find that the original protagonist, the hero or the heroine of that particular story, they have AI assistance. That means they have some robots who has idea of what is going on, who have more than robotic comprehension of the world. They can analyze data on their own. They can express opinions. So this AI concept, which was previously not there anywhere, came along with this um, concepts of uh, sentient robots, right? So there you had the AI models. Now it is a reality. We have the AI tools on the internet. Although we don't have a device, but we have the AI tools like ChatGPT and Quillbot. Then you have Bard. All these are softwares which are programmed 
which are made by the Microsoft Corporation, the Apple, the you know leading industry, uh, leading software co tech companies in the world. They are producing this AI assistant programs who can help you whenever you log into the IRCTC uh, well, website, you have somebody called as Disha as AI assistant, you can log into any um, online shopping platform, you will find AI assistants, they will ask you what do you want to buy and redirect you to those pages. So all of these things uh, are where something which was in the past and now they were fiction of the past, but they are in present they are actually something uh, which we use in our daily life so that that time science fiction has become now times reality right next is meeting anywhere once we had the idea of teleportation and wormholes and black holes coming into science fiction universe we are moving around in time, moving around in space, going to any any place, anywhere. Also, we have the technology of holograms. It was mostly used in um, movies really where there is a, uh, especially with the story where four or five galaxy heads, they have to confer, they have to uh, meet and talk about a particular topic. So, at that time, they cannot be present. So, their face is visible on a screen. But this was not possible, uh, let us say 60 years ago, 50 years ago, it was not possible. But nowadays, we have video conferencing, um, like, you know, it is a kind of everyday rule. People fall asleep while video conferencing, people fall asleep while using the video chat option on WhatsApp. So, that is the reality of today we have. Out of this four boons that technology has given us, out of this four very convenient things that technology has uh, made the science fiction possible, the fourth one that is pandemic is one that is a ban, one that is a uh, traumatic incident, one that is a tragedy, travesty of the uh, entire situation. Everything good that science fiction has done it is all undone almost when it comes to pandemic. So, first of all, we will try to understand what is pandemic and what is the situation of the human beings when they face a pandemic. Then we will move on to the study of science fiction and pandemic. So, here pandemic occurring over a wide geographic area such as multiple countries or continents and typically affecting a significant proportion of the population. This is a disease which is occurring over a wide geographic area. It is not like uh, limited to a particular state or a particular region or a particular community. That is the difference between epidemic and pandemic. When it is an epidemic, it is related to a small region, a particular community, particular area. But in case of pandemic, it is almost intercontinental. Intercontinental means it is spread from one continent to the other. Almost the entire world is affected by it. Or even if it is not intercontinental, it is intracontinental. Can you imagine the entire of the Asian continent, all the people living in that continent are affected or are potential, they have the potential to get affected, are prone to get affected by the disease. So, in that case, we call it a pandemic and it creates chaos. It gives rise to anarchy. When the government falls, people are panicked. There is a panic stricken state. Nobody is listening to anybody. Everybody is afraid that they might catch the virus, they might catch the disease. They are running from each other. Your own family members will not be you know, talking to you, will be staying far from you just because you have got a disease. So that is the scenario of pandemic. Then typically affecting a significant portion of the population. It is not only the geographical space that comes into con um, consideration. You must also consider the number of people affected. 
if suppose it is the continent of Asia and only let's say 500 people are affected throughout the continent, then it is not a pandemic. It is just a case of disease. Uh, some people are susceptible to some kind of virus and they are affected and it is easily treatable. So treatable is one condition. When it is a pandemic, it becomes an outbreak. Outbreak means anybody left and right, up and down is getting that disease and it is going out of the hands of the medical facilities, the medical practitioners to control that disease, to keep it within you know, a, an acceptable range so that there can be enough medical assistance given to that person. If there is only one hospital and 1000 patients, so what happens when it is not possible to treat all the patients? Patients die. Some patients get privilege over the others. Somebody goes and says, I am the minister's uh, relative, you have to give me the bed. Somebody comes with a great deal of money and puts it on the table that I want to uh, be treated first. So these are the you know, things people do when they are under attack or threat. What is the threat over here? The threat is of death. Everybody is afraid to die. And once it comes to that, that if I don't do this, I will die, people can um, behave like animals. And that is what happens when there is an outbreak of a pandemic. People start to panic, they start to harm themselves, their near and dear ones, as well as the society at large. So moving on, let us have a look at the history of pandemic over here. In 541 to 542 AD, there was a plague. Plague, what is a plague? A plague is a kind of disease which is carried via small rodents like, let's say rats, mice, moles. These are the small rodents who stay in very filthy environment. So they carry this disease and once they go and bite somebody, they poison the food, they contaminate the water. Any person drinks that water or eats that food or is bitten by that particular rodent, he or she catches the pandemic, catches the plague, right? So the plague of Justinian, named after the Byzantine emperor Justinian I, caused by the Yersinia pestis bacterium. So this is the name of the bacterium, Yersinia pestis. Similar to the Black Death, we will come to know about the Black Death in the second point here. So let us first complete the first one. Estimated to have killed tens of millions of people and had a significant impact on the Byzantine Empire and the Mediterranean region. A kingdom which is attacked by plague the population solely relies on the judgment of the king. You see, when the population loses faith on the person who is ruling the place, there is bound to be of a something called revolt. People will go and revolt against the ruler. So this plague itself constituted uh, the necessary elements to kill the empire. Right. So, when you talk about plague, pandemic and death toll, death toll means the number of people who were affected and killed or uh, the number of people who died by that disease, tens of millions. Do you know how many zeros a million has? This is a thousand, uh, this is one million and tens of millions, it's not like ten. It's like 20 or 30, tens of millions of people. All of them perished due to this plague. Next, we have the Black Death, 1347 to 1351. This was during the medieval period. Medieval period, we know, uh, let us know a little bit about medieval England. There was a system of feudalism. Feudalism is that the, uh, the king had 
the power to distribute the lands uh, among nobles and lords and thereby the people who owned the lands were called as landlords right so the landlords did they go and farm in that land no they gave the lands to farmers once the farmers had the lands first of all they have to give everything um, i mean uh, they have to give uh, almost uh, nine tenth of the produce something like that if they are producing one kilo of uh, rice they have to give at least 750 grams away to the owner of the land now they can sell the 250 grams and earn their livelihood this kind of situation and moreover in order to grow rice you need the seeds you need the fertilizer you need the soil to be perfect you need the water so the farmers went and borrowed money from money lenders in order to prepare the field and cultivate it. What return they got was the amount they got for selling that 250 grams of rice was not worth the enough toil they had put in to grow that rice. So they immediately ran into debt. Suddenly the farmers in England, they were not able to pay their taxes. They were not able to keep their economy steady. They were suicides, they were deaths. So that was the condition of feudal England. And in that condition, when the common people were already suffering very much, this thing happened, the Black Death. It was caused by the Yersinia pestis, again bacterium, and is believed to have originated in Central Asia spread along trade routes and ships, devastating Europe, Asia and North Africa, resulting in the deaths of an estimated 75 to 200 million people. Right before this, we were discussing uh, tens of millions of people dying. Now 200 million, the figure would be like this. This would be the figure. These many people died throughout Europe, Asia and North Africa. So what is the relation between all these three? The relation is simply that the people of Europe, they were uh, going and trading all over the country. They were establishing colonies. They were bringing back slaves from the African continent. All of these things were already happening. So what happened was in Central Asia, while they were traveling through Central Asia, this Black Death, this uh, one of them caught the virus uh, Yersinia pestis and brought it to Europe and it destroyed a lot of lives. So that is considered as one of the very bad phases in the history of the um, European continent. When many people died, many people lost their family members and there was um, you know a dearth of medical assistance throughout the continent the third cholera pandemic so the first cholera pandemic was not that severe the second was also not that severe but the third one happened between 1852 to 1860 that means it lasted for eight long years originating in india so cholera this particular pandemic originated in our country, cholera spread to multiple countries, including Europe, because India was a colony of Europe at that time, North America, Africa, causing millions of deaths. So this particular uh, pandemic was not as severe as the Black Death. So Black Death is considered as one of the most severe pandemics in the history of pandemic of the world. Then you have the Spanish flu. 1918 to 1919. It was only for a year caused by the H1N1 influenza A virus. You will know about this later also. Only a few years back, this again resurfaced as swine flu. I'm sure many of you might remember this term. The swine flu is exactly this one, H1N1 influenza virus. Within this small phase of one year, let us look at the damage that it had done. Infected about one third of the world's population. One third of the world's population. That is, if there is, there was 30 people on the planet, 10 people were affected by this flu. 
to that kind of impact the Spanish flu, the H1N1 influenza virus had on the uh, human civilization and resulted in an estimated 50 million deaths worldwide, particularly deadly for young healthy adults. Very interesting, this particular flu, it did not kill um, children, it did not kill old people, it was only killing young adults, that is teenagers, those who are within the um, age of 20 to 30, they were more susceptible to this guy, this particular virus. See, very interesting. Then we have the Asian flu, 1957 to 1958, caused by the H2N2 influenza A virus. So, first of all, we came up with the Spanish flu, which was H1N1 influenza A virus. Now, this is the Asian flu, which is H2N2 influenza A virus. Emerged in East Asia and spread globally, resulting in an estimated 1 to 2 million deaths worldwide. It is not half as severe as the earlier pandemics we were talking about. The Hong Kong flu. 1968 to 1969 again for a year caused by the H3N2 influenza A virus. So, if you think that influenza it only causes uh, fever and headache, no, influenza is a range of viruses. It is a type of virus, it is not one particular virus. So, these are the various types of influenza virus originated in Hong Kong that is in China and quickly spread worldwide causing an estimated 1 to 4 million deaths. HIV AIDS pandemic 1981 present. Sadly, this is a kind of situation we do not have any vaccine for AIDS. We do not have any medication for AIDS. The only thing we can do when somebody has AIDS, that person is to be kept under a uh, wrap should not be allowed to be infected by any disease because once it's infected that person will die. So AIDS is that kind of disease, HIV stands for human immunodeficiency virus. That means the virus attacks the immune system of humans that uh, if you have an immune system you will recover from a fever, if you have an immune system you will recover from a diarrhea. But if you do not have an immune system, a system in your body which can fight the germs, then you will die instantly. HIV does that thing. It does not kill you. It kills your immune system so that if even if you uh, get normal cold, you will die. So that is the power of HIV AIDS and still it is ongoing caused by the human immunodeficiency virus. This ongoing pandemic has resulted in approximately 36 million deaths worldwide. Remains a significant global health challenge. So it is still a challenge, it is still a challenge for the World Health Organization, for all the organizations throughout all the countries on this planet to fight HIV AIDS. We have not come up with anything which can treat or which can destroy this particular virus. H1N1 influenza pandemic 2009-2010 caused by a novel, so novel means new, okay. Novel H1N1 influenza A virus first identified in Mexico and rapidly spread worldwide. It resulted in 200,000 deaths. So this is a variation of the previous influenza virus that we have been talking about and it is a new variation. I am sure in this pandemic world, in this post pandemic world, all of us are aware with the term new variant. We have alpha covid, we have beta covid, we have omega covid, all sorts of covid variants are there. So that time H1N1, then H2N2, then H3N2, then again H1N1 got repeated but this time it was a novel one, a new version of H1N1 influenza virus. And lastly, we have COVID-19 pandemic, which is still going on, ongoing, but it is under check. Let us take a very quick walk through the COVID-19 pandemic situation. 
It originated in Yuhan city in China. I'm sure you know why it is called 19 because it began in 2019, December 2019. And COVID means coronavirus, coronavirus disease. Okay, coronavirus disease. That is the full idea of full form of COVID. How does it spread? It spreads through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person talks, coughs or sneezes. It can also spread by touching surfaces or objects contaminated with the virus and then touching the face, particularly the eyes, nose or mouth. I don't have to repeat this to you because I'm sure if you are living in India and you are uh, you were making calls to other people during the pandemic situation. Every time you tried to call somebody, first of all, Amitabh Bachchan would pick up. And Amitabh Bachchan would warn you how to take care of yourself during the COVID pandemic era. And he would repeatedly remind you to wash your hands, to cover your face with a mask, to apply a sanitizer on the surfaces that you are touching every day. So, Everything you already know about COVID-19, I won't repeat all those things anymore. The today only in the morning, that is 3rd August 2023, I went and searched that what is the current COVID situation. The total cases till today, that is 3rd August to 2023, is the number of COVID affected people is 692, that is 692 actually it is 692 million 692 million people can you imagine i am having trouble imagining so this is the situation right now but the death we have the deaths like 6 million people here so this is 600 million right that is the contagion rate contagion means when contagious is when you get a disease from somebody that is contagious right the contagion rate is uh, this 600 million people throughout the world got affected by covid 19 but the death is only 6 million that is what the record shows at least right so if we just consider this that what is the percentage then 6 by 600 into 100, you get 1%. So, the death rate of COVID-19 is only 1%. It is a pandemic, no doubt. People are dying, no doubt. But we should be happy about it that the recovery rate is 99%. So, those who are affected by COVID today, uh, are most likely to recover in no time. Now, coming back to our parent domain of science fiction, we have been talking about pandemic for the last maybe half an hour. So now we are going back to the area of science fiction. Do you know that there is a book which was written in uh, 2014 perhaps, which predicted COVID? predicted COVID and also very uncanny, it's very uncanny, had the name of Yuhan in the book that the COVID or, you know, it couldn't say that it was um, COVID-19, but it said that the pandemic started from uh, China. The name of the virus was Yuhan 400. I'm telling you the fact, the name of the book is The Eyes of Darkness by American author Dean Kunz. You go and you just have a look, you will find that this book is talking about a pandemic which started in China and the name of the virus was Yuhan 400 and it was affecting people worldwide. And this book was published way before COVID-19 ever happened. So it's very uncanny that what the author Dean Koons was thinking when he was writing the book, right? So moving on to novels written on the COVID-19, Coronavirus Disease 2019. These are the novels 
on science fiction uh, related to the COVID-19. The Night Before the End by Jake Bible. This post-apocalyptic novel, Apocalypse is an idea that the civilization, the human civilization has come to an end. There is no hiding, there is no running, everybody is killed, their machines are taking over, the pandemic is uh, raging throughout the world and the human civilization is on the verge, is on the brink of extinction. That is the entire scenario of apocalypse. So in a post-apocalyptic novel is set during the COVID-19 pandemic and follows a group of friends trying to survive in a world filled with zombies and other dangers. So here uh, the author has given a fantastic uh, spin to the story of COVID-19 that you know, COVID-19 is not only uh, affecting people but also turning people into zombies. We'll shortly be discussing zombies after some time. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be very excited with that. Then we have a novel called Lockdown by Peter May, published in 2020. See, all of these novels, they are all published in 2020. Very recent works, right? So the novel explores a fictional scenario where a golden pandemic, where a global pandemic sweeps the world and the protagonist tries to solve a crime during the lockdown. So lockdown situation, I'm sure you must be aware that in China, uh, um, this is a common knowledge, it came out that uh, when the government came to know that this building had COVID patients, what they did was they went and um, plastered the entire building from the outside. That is, they uh, sort of welded the iron gates to the building so that nobody could come out. They blocked the windows, they blocked the doors. Uh, everything was shut and welded so that the people who were inside the building could never come out. And they were also not given foods and supplies. So this is the situation, uh, current situation in China. Whenever they're getting a news that this coronavirus is uh, some patient is there, they are simply going and shutting off the place, no matter if the patient is alive or dead after a few weeks, right? So it's a very scary kind of situation out there. Thankfully, in India and other um, liberal countries in the world, the government has taken enough initiatives and has put uh, the virus on check. Uh, the maximum population on the earth has now been affected so they have become um, and of course vaccination has been done so now we have an immunity towards this virus antivirus by rod marsden a thriller set during the covid 19 pandemic where a group of experts race against time to develop a vaccine while dealing with conspiracy theories and international intrigue so during any pandemic, the first thing that comes to mind is vaccine. If we had this vaccine before, then we would not have had to uh, withstand this kind of uh, diseased condition. Nowadays, there are vaccines for uh, chickenpox, smallpox. You have vaccines for polio. Polio is has been eradicated from our country. There are no longer any more cases of polio in this country anymore. So. Uh, antivirus is that uh, where the a group of experts are trying to make a antivirus, an antidote, trying to come up with a vaccine of COVID-19 while they are being, uh, you know, disturbed by other people. The COVID Chronicles, edited by Samuel Peralta. This anthology features short stories from different authors, each reflecting on the human experience during the COVID-19 pandemic. Then we have the Plague Letters by V. L. Valentine. It is more recent. See, these three works are published in 2021. Set during the COVID-19 pandemic, this novel follows a historical mystery with a contemporary twist as a woman uncovers the truth about a long lost love letter. So there is elements of uh, science fiction and pandemic in it, but mostly it is an adventure story, a thriller story. Notes on an Execution by Dania Kyuvaka. This novel 
centers around a woman's experience working at a hospital during the COVID-19 pandemic, grappling with life and death decisions. Although this novel is not directly related to the field of science fiction, but as an experience of a human being during the pandemic situation, this novel is very important from that point of view. The Great Realization by Tomos Roberts, based on a viral video poem, this children's book reflects on the COVID-19 pandemic's impact on the world with a hopeful message for the future. So this is based on a viral video poem. Nowadays, uh, I'm sure you know that media has developed so much so that people are not only writing poems, they are actually reciting the poems with music and background and scenery. So the entire thing becomes a visual and auditory. Um, the entire thing creates a visual and an auditory impact on the mind of the viewer come listener, right? So this great realization by Tomos is based on uh, some such book and reflects the COVID-19 pandemic's impact. Now we come to the idea of zombie apocalypse. It is one of the most fascinating or rather horror genre of um, science fiction movies that we have right now. Apocalypse, we discussed that the end of human civilization, the end, the end game where the science and technology has been so advanced that it has gone out of the hands of the human beings who are, were supposed to, uh, you know, take stock of things and man it or rather um, control it. What happens in an apocalypse is everything goes out of control. There is anarchy. There is no ruling government. People are trying to survive. That is the basic thing that is happening in an apocalypse. So, so more postmodern zombies, apocalypse. I have used the word postmodern because modernism is something which gives very much importance to emotions. However, postmodernism is something who says that because nobody cares for our emotions, why should we tell people our emotions? We should not tell people our emotions because not everybody will give proper respect to emotions. So zombies, when we consider them as mindless, we consider them as emotionless, they are actually the postmodern people. We'll come to that discussion right away. Reanimation. These are the characteristics of zombies, right? Corpses that have somehow come back to life usually without any form of consciousness or self-awareness. So reanimation is now corpses, that is dead bodies. They did bodies, of course, they are not supposed to move around, right? But somehow they have regained their physical processes of moving around and uh, at least some motor functions of moving the hands and legs and head and mouth. So that is not consciousness, that is just moving around the body parts. Infection or contagion caused by a virus or contagion, that is the zombie thing, the entire, uh, uh, how does a person turn into a zombie? Caused by a virus or contagion that spreads from person to person through bites, scratches or from other forms of contact with infected individuals. Generally, what happens in these kind of stories is that a person who has been infected by a particular virus or a disease turns into a zombie. He goes and bites another person or scratches another person or at least draws blood. The moment this person draws blood, the virus goes from this body to that body into the bloodstream of the healthy individual and affects that person. So that person in turn becomes a zombie. Mindlessness. The zombies don't have minds, they don't have memory, they don't have self-awareness, they don't have emotions, they don't have spiritual consciousness, nothing. They are just moving a bag of bones and flesh with a, you know, a tendency to bite and fight and kill. Those are the things. So mindless beings driven solely by the basic instinct to feed on human flesh. That is the idea. Hunger for human flesh. Insatiable hunger for human flesh, even if you give the zombie uh, a dead body to eat, the zombie will eat and then again go and eat some others. So that is the idea. It's a, it's a, it's a grotesque idea. Okay, 
that is the element of grotesque element of gore element of bloodshed all those things are friends to the zombie narratives decay and physical changes so zombies they are dead bodies but they have been resurrected they have uh, been uh, sort of moving around but actually they are dead right so one part of the uh, zombie identity is that their body is in a state of decomposition that is the skin is coming off right there are worms in the skin in the body they the, a part of their face has decomposed one of the hand is hanging loose they don't have feelings they don't feel pain they don't have emotions so actually the entire decomposition thing can happen and still the zombie can move around decay and physical changes exhibit physical changes due to the decomposition of their body such as pale skin rotting flesh and open wounds apocalyptic scenarios collapse of society and the struggle of survivors to evade and combat the relentless hordes of the undead so zombies are also called as undead if you want to enjoy some really cool zombie movies you must go through zombie apocalypse you can go through uh, double tap you can go through world war z uh, also all the parts of resident evil resident evil is a you know a very interesting very fascinating zombie series but you cannot watch it alone it's very horror filled at least it's very terrifying i couldn't watch it alone okay so moving on to the pandemic in science fiction first of all all this horror filled things that we were talking about isn't it a part of dystopia dystopia is a society where everything goes wrong so dystopia is that reality where all these pandemic uh, zombie situation the uh, bio warfare that is going on everything's come uh, under this kind of um, place that is a world full of chaos where nothing is right where it is full of exploitation and the survivors are only trying to survive okay then we have the stand by stephen king he is one of the most famous authors nowadays a deadly virus nicknamed captain trips wipes out most of humanity and the survivors are drawn to two opposing factions in an apocalyptic battle of good versus evil so in this particular novel we find not only it is a zombie kind of novel but also there are two sides two factions even in a post apocalyptic world when human civilization is in uh, is called into question whether human race is going to live or not even in that society the uh, human beings they are divided they are fighting each other so yeah it's a very sad story station 11 by emily st john mandel uh, published in 2014 set in the aftermath of a devastating flu pandemic let me tell you the word flu actually comes from the word influenza okay devastating flu pandemic this novel explores the connections between characters and the resilience of art and humanity i prefer this word more than any word anywhere on this planet if you are pushed back by destiny if you are pushed back by disease but still you have the courage to stand up and fight that is called resilience so this particular novel shows resilience of art and humanity world war z by max brooks written as a collection of interviews this book chronicles a global war against zombies resulting from a pandemic only very recently a movie has you know it has been a movie it has been adapted to a movie storyline starring brad pitt where world war z is actually what happens is that um the virus that attacks everybody everybody turns into zombies but finally um the virus can identify if a person is going to die if the person has cancer or a very deadly disease the virus does not affect that person very interesting concept you will if you want you can see the movie right the andromeda strain a michael crichton 1969 
a team of scientists investigates a deadly extraterrestrial microorganism that arrives on Earth via a crashed satellite. So, in 1969, it is a Michael Crichton movie. Remember, Michael Crichton is the person who came up with very fascinating concepts, even the concept of the West World, the concept of uh, Jurassic Park, all the science fiction concept along with the concept of the Andromeda strain that is an extraterrestrial microorganism, a small you know, virus kind of thing that arrives on Earth via a crashed satellite. Blindness by Jose Saramago An unexplained epidemic of blindness spreads rapidly causing society to descend into chaos. Suddenly everybody has gone blind. Consider that. The Road by Cormac McCarthy, though not explicitly a pandemic story, it is set in a post-apocalyptic world where an unspecified catastrophe has devastated humanity. So, it is more like the narrative and the process of the human beings, how the human beings are processing that information. So, it is more about that. Now, we are going to talk about The Last Town on Earth by Thomas Mullen, published in 2006. In a small town during the 1918 influenza pandemic, remember we discussed the 1918 influenza pandemic before, the community must make a life or death decision to quarantine itself from the outside world. So, if it is going to quarantine itself, I am sure everybody is again aware of the word quarantine after COVID-19, it has become a part of our regular vocabulary. If the community quarantines itself inside the house then and goes to nowhere, then it runs the risk of uh, running low on food supplies and everything. And if it is go, if the family members decide to go outside to buy food and water and other sustaining things, they might catch the disease. So, it is a very tricky situation. So, the last town on earth. The Passage by Justin Cronin published in 2010. A government experiment goes awry, that is wrong, unleashing a deadly virus that creates vampiric creatures leading to a post-apocalyptic world. So, in this particular story, we have the concept of vampires, that is blood-sucking uh, human beings who never age. Vampires of late has been uh, in fashion with the production of movies like Van Elshing and the um, movie like uh, Van Elshing and uh, Twilight. There are also very popular TV series on the internet. I'm sure those who understand which series I will refer to, they will be smiling by now because uh, they have really um, you know, mesmerizing storylines. Right. So, vampiric creatures leading to a post-apocalyptic world. So, again that apocalypse things is always there. By reading these, at least these novels, you must be thinking that all of these authors have decided that apocalypse is inevitable. Humanity is going to destroy itself. There is no chance for humanity to save itself. All the machines, all the nuclear weapons, everything is going to cause only one thing that is the destruction of humanity. So, let us start writing the story of what happens after the destruction of humanity. So, it is a very dark humor kind of thing, right? When you read pandemic fiction everywhere, it is post-apocalyptic world. Searching for hope and survival. Okay, The Dog Stars by Peter Heller set after a flu pandemic, a pilot and his dog navigate a post-apocalyptic world searching for hope and survival. So, not only a human being is a character here, there is also a dog. So, introduction of a dog inside the storyline, it you know gives the human being some space. It can talk to the dog, it can reflect about life, having the dog by the side. A lot of things come into play as soon as you make dog a character. Okay. Moving on to the last uh, uh, novel that we have taken in this lecture, The White Plague. Now, we had Black Death, remember, as one of the deadliest plagues on this planet is the Black Death. The White Plague by Frank Herbert in, do you remember, we were also talking about another uh, novel, Dune, also a science fiction novel by Frank Herbert, 1982. After his family is killed in an IRA bombing, 
a genetic engineer unleashes a deadly virus targeting only women leading to widespread chaos and conflict. So not only we were talking about genetics in the previous lecture, if you remember. So not only that, that this particular person has designed a virus, it has designed a virus which will persist on, um, you know, which will only target women. It will only kill women. It will only infect women. So this kind of gender discrimination among virus, I don't support it. Uh, you know, virus should kill everybody. Everybody should die. Okay, jokes apart, let's come back. So after his family is killed by an IRA bombing, so this is a kind of vengeance that he takes. He makes use of the virus in order to create a bio warfare environment. So we have been discussing all of these things before. Now it is likely that we discuss one more thing that is bio weapons. Many people say that um, the COVID-19 that was uh, released onto the world is form of a bio weapon to kill the world population, to saturate the markets, this and that many conspiracy theories go on. But bio warfare is a reality. I will tell you a story if you find you can you just can go and watch that during the Cold War that was happening in Russia, the soldiers who were attacking the Russian villages, the villagers what they did was they ran away from their places and they burnt all the food. All the food, everything they burnt the entire village and they ran away. And while running away, they also poisoned the waters. So whenever the soldiers came, first of all, they died by water poisoning, uh, by taking poison via the water supplies. And they also died because there was no food. So biology or uh, bio warfare has always been a part whenever um, the idea comes that we want to kill people, but we do not want to send soldiers. Okay, send a virus. This is the modern concept of warfare nowadays. So moving on to the quiz time, think and answer. Here you will have to consider all the aspects of pandemic and science fiction that we discussed here today. Discuss human life in the face of pandemic. This is a philosophical question. Think about the last five, six years that we had on this planet, our experiences. What did we learn? What did we lose? What are the things that added to our wisdom for the future? Think about it and answer. Knowledge of biology has been put to use to make bioweapons. We were just talking about it. Discuss pandemic as a bioweapon in science fiction. So if uh, you might come across science fiction stories where pandemic are used as bioweapons to meet political ends, that is something which is really nasty uh, given human beings are capable of it. What are some common tropes and motives found in science fiction? Pandemic narratives and how do they reflect real world anxieties and concerns? How do science fiction pandemic narratives explore the social, political and economic impacts of global health crisis on societies and individuals? So pandemic is affecting you as an individual, but it is also affecting a society. So whether you are fighting the pandemic on your own or you are fighting the pandemic as a society, as a part of society, that will again your choice will make a difference in decision making. If you are only fighting as an individual, you might not help your neighbor. But if you are fighting as a society, you are going to help your neighbor. So your decisions will also change. Similarly, politics will change. The entire structure of the state and the world governments will change. What are some common survival strategies and tactics employed by characters in science fiction zombie apocalypse narratives? Now this, for this you need to read the novels or watch the movies. You will see they are trying to look for an antidote, antivirus kind of thing. If you have T virus, you have antivirus. T virus is actually the name of the virus in Resident Evil series. So whenever you uh, come up with an antidote, you are immediately cured of the condition that you are in. Here is a list of references that you can go through while hunting for the information that you need in order to answer the questions. 
you have new ways the pandemics of science fiction um infection media and capitalism robots and pandemics in science fiction and finally viral science fiction five types of pandemic fiction these are very useful articles and books easily available you go to google scholar google scholar is a web browser by the way you type google, uh, inside the web you know search engine box you have to enter these names and you will get the pdf you will get the details of all these magazines and all these journal articles and books you can read it from there thank you for listening to this lecture so patiently i'm sure you have found a lot of interesting facts about pandemic and science fiction and especially the zombie culture which is nowadays uh, trending rather in the field of science fiction and movies you will uh, surely enjoy once you start researching that topic thank you very much see you in the next lecture Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I'll be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I'm going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia, which has been retold by several authors, among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I'll be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled, in all of its adaptations almost, as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty-handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone wiet, and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman, and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening, I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.